Louisa May Alcott, November 29, 1832 to March 6, 1888, was an American novelist and poet best known as the author of the novel Little Women, 1868, and its sequels Little Men, 1871, and Joe's Boys, 1886. Raised in New England by her transcendentalist parents, Abigail May and Amos Bronson Alcott, she grew up among many of the well-known intellectuals of the day, such as Ralph Waldo Emerson, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Henry David Thoreau, and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Alcott's family suffered from financial difficulties, and while she worked to help support the family from an early age, she also sought an outlet in writing. She began to receive critical success for her writing in the 1860s. Early in her career, she sometimes used the pen name A. M. Barnard, under which she wrote novels for young adults that focused on spies, revenge, and crossdressers. Published in 1868, Little Women is set in the Alcott family home, Orchard House, in Concord, Massachusetts, and is loosely based on Alcott's childhood experiences with her three sisters. The novel was very well received and is still a popular children's novel today, filmed several times. Alcott was an abolitionist and a feminist and remained unmarried throughout her life. She died from a stroke, two days after her father died, in Boston on March 6, 1888. Early life Louisa May Alcott was born on November 29, 1832, in Germantown, which is now part of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on her father's 33rd birthday. She was the daughter of transcendentalist and educator Amos Bronson Alcott and social worker Abby May and the second of four daughters, Anna Bronson Alcott was the eldest, Elizabeth Sewell Alcott and Abigail May Alcott were the two youngest. The family moved to Boston in 1834, where Alcott's father established an experimental school and joined the Transcendental Club with Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. Bronson Alcott's opinions on education and tough views on child-rearing shaped young Alcott's mind with a desire to achieve perfection, a goal of the Transcendentalists. His attitudes towards Alcott's wild and independent behavior, and his inability to provide for his family, created conflict between Bronson Alcott and his wife and daughters. In 1840, after several setbacks with the school, the Alcott family moved to a cottage on two acres .81 hectares of land, situated along the Sudbury River in Concord, Massachusetts. The three years they spent at the rented Hosmer Cottage were described as idyllic. By 1843, the Alcott family moved, along with six other members of the Consociate family, to the Utopian Fruitlands community for a brief interval in 1843-1844. After the collapse of the Utopian Fruitlands, they moved on to rented rooms and finally, with Abigail May Alcott's inheritance and financial help from Emerson, they purchased a homestead in Concord. They moved into the home they named, Hillside, on April 1, 1845, but moved in 1852, selling to Nathaniel Hawthorne who renamed it The Wayside. Moving 22 times in 30 years, the Alcotts returned to Concord once again in 1857 and moved into Orchard House, a two-story clapboard farmhouse, in the spring of 1858. Alcott's early education included lessons from the naturalist Henry David Thoreau who inspired her to write Thoreau's flute based on her time at Walden's Pond. Most of the education she received though, came from her father who was strict and believed in the sweetness of self-denial. She also received some instruction from writers and educators such as Ralph Waldo Emerson, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Margaret Fuller, and Julia Ward Howe, all of whom were family friends. She later described these early years in a newspaper sketch entitled, Transcendental Wild Oats. The sketch was reprinted in the volume Silver Pitchers, 1876, which relates the family's experiment in plain living and high thinking. At Fruitlands, poverty made it necessary for Alcott to go to work at an early age as a teacher, seamstress, governess, domestic helper, and writer. Her sisters also supported the family, working as seamstresses, while their mother took on social work among the Irish immigrants. Only the youngest, May, was able to attend public school. Due to all of these pressures, writing became a creative and emotional outlet for Alcott. Her first book was Flower Fables 1849, a selection of tales originally written for Ellen Emerson, daughter of Ralph Waldo Emerson. Alcott is quoted as saying, I wish I was rich, I was good, and we were all a happy family this day, and was driven in life not to be poor. 
In 1847, she and her family served as station masters on the Underground Railroad, when they housed a fugitive slave for one week and had discussions with Frederick Douglass. Alcott read and admired the Declaration of Sentiments. Published by the Seneca Falls Convention on Women's Rights, advocating for women's suffrage and became the first woman to register to vote in Concord, Massachusetts in a school board election. The 1850s were hard times for the Alcotts, and in 1854 Louisa found solace at the Boston Theater where she wrote the rival Prima Donnas, which she later burned due to a quarrel between the actresses on who would play what role. At one point in 1857, unable to find work and filled with such despair, Alcott contemplated suicide. During that year, she read Elizabeth Gaskell's biography of Charlotte Bronte and found many parallels to her own life. In 1858, her younger sister Elizabeth died, and her older sister Anna married a man named John Pratt. This felt, to Alcott, to be a breaking up of their sisterhood. Literary success As an adult, Alcott was an abolitionist and a feminist. In 1860, Alcott began writing for the Atlantic Monthly. When the American Civil War broke out, she served as a nurse in the Union Hospital at Georgetown, D.C., for six weeks in 1862-1863. She intended to serve three months as a nurse, but halfway through she contracted typhoid and became deathly ill, though she eventually recovered. Her letters home, revised and published in the Boston anti-slavery paper Commonwealth and collected as Hospital Sketches 1863, republished with editions in 1869, brought her first critical recognition for her observations and humor. She wrote about the mismanagement of hospitals and the indifference and callousness of some of the surgeons she encountered. Her main character, Tribulation Periwinkle, showed a passage from innocence to maturity and is a serious and eloquent witness. Her novel Moods 1864, based on her own experience, was also promising. In the mid 1860s, Alcott wrote passionate, fiery novels and sensational stories under the nom de plume A. M. Barnard. Among these are A Long Fatal Love Chase and Pauline's Passion and Punishment. Her protagonists for these books are strong and smart. She also produced stories for children, and after they became popular, she did not go back to writing for adults. Other books she wrote are the novelette A Modern Mephistopheles 1875, which people thought Julian Hawthorne wrote, and the semi-autobiographical novel work 1873. Alcott became even more successful with the first part of Little Women, or Meg, Joe, Beth and Amy 1868, a semi-autobiographical account of her childhood with her sisters in Concord, Massachusetts, published by the Roberts Brothers. Part two, or part second, also known as Good Wives 1869, followed the March sisters into adulthood and marriage. Little Men 1871 detailed Joe's life at the Plumfield School that she founded with her husband Professor Bayer at the conclusion of part two of Little Women. Joe's Boys 1886 completed the March family saga. In Little Women, Alcott based her heroine, Joe, on herself. But whereas Joe marries at the end of the story, Alcott remained single throughout her life. She explained her spinsterhood in an interview with Louise Chandler Moulton. I am more than half persuaded that I am a man's soul put by some freak of nature into a woman's body. Because I have fallen in love with so many pretty girls and never once the least bit with any man. However, Alcott's romance while in Europe with the young Polish man Ladislas. Laddie. Wisniewski was detailed in her journals but then deleted by Alcott herself before her death. Alcott identified Laddie as the model for Laurie in Little Women. Likewise, every character seems to be paralleled to some extent, from Beth's death mirroring Lizzie's to Joe's rivalry with the youngest, Amy, as Alcott felt a sort of rivalry for Abigail May, at times. Though Alcott never married, she did take in May's daughter, Louisa, after May's death in 1879 from childbed fever, caring for little Lulu. Until her death, Little Women was well received, with critics and audiences finding it suitable for many age groups. A reviewer of Eclectic magazine called it, "...the very best of books to reach the hearts of the young of any age from 6 to 60." It was a fresh, natural representation of daily life. With the success of Little Women, Alcott shied away from the attention and would sometimes act as a servant when fans would come to her house. 
Along with Elizabeth Stoddard, Rebecca Harding Davis, Anne Moncure Crane, and others, Alcott was part of a group of female authors during the Gilded Age, who addressed women's issues in a modern and candid manner. Their works were, as one newspaper columnist of the period commented, among the decided signs of the times. <laughs> Later years After her youngest sister May died in 1879, Louisa took over for the care of niece, Lulu, who was named after Louisa. Alcott suffered chronic health problems in her later years, including vertigo. She and her earliest biographers attributed her illness and death to mercury poisoning. During her American Civil War service, Alcott contracted typhoid fever and was treated with a compound containing mercury. Recent analysis of Alcott's illness, however, suggests that her chronic health problems may have been associated with an autoimmune disease, not mercury exposure. Moreover, a late portrait of Alcott shows a rash on her cheeks, which is a characteristic of lupus. Alcott died of a stroke at age 55 in Boston, on March 6, 1888, two days after her father's death. Lulu, her niece, was only eight years old when Louisa died. Louisa's last known words were, Is it not meningitis? She is buried in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Concord, near Emerson, Hawthorne, and Thoreau, on a hillside now known as Author's Ridge. Louisa frequently wrote in her journals about going on runs up until she died. She challenged the social norms regarding gender by encouraging her young female readers to run as well. Her Boston home is featured on the Boston Women's Heritage Trail. Her childhood home Orchard House is now a museum that pays homage to Louisa May Alcott and her family that focuses on education. In addition, Harriet Ryson wrote Louisa May Alcott, The Woman Behind, Little Women, which later became a film that was directed by Nancy Porter and aired on PBS television. In 1996 Alcott was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Selected works <laughs> The Little Women Trilogy Little Women or Meg, Joe, Beth and Amy 1868 There is a part second of Little Women, also known as Good Wives, published in 1869, and afterward published together with Little Women. Little Men, Life at Plumfield with Joe's Boys 1871. Joe's Boys and How They Turned Out, a sequel to Little Men, 1886. <laughs> <laughs> Novels The Inheritance 1849, unpublished until 1997. Moods 1865, revised 1882. The Mysterious Key and What It Opened 1867 An Old Fashioned Girl 1870 Will's Wonder Book 1870 Work A Story of Experience 1873 Beginning Again Being a Continuation of Work 1875 Eight Cousins or the Ant Hill 1875 Rose in Bloom A Sequel to Eight Cousins 1876 Under the Lilacs 1878 Jack and Jill, A Village Story 1880. Proverb Stories 1882. is A.M. Barnard equals 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 Behind a Mask, or a Woman's Power 1866. The Abbot's Ghost, or Maurice Treherne's Temptation 1867. A Long Fatal Love Chase 1866, first published 1995. Topic. Published anonymously A Modern Mephistopheles 1877. Topic. Short story collections for children Aunt Joe's Scrap Bag 1872 to 1882, 66 short stories in six volumes 1. Aunt Joe's Scrap Bag 2. Shawl Straps 3. Cupid and Chow Chow 4. My Girls, etc. 5. Jimmy's Cruise in the Pinafore, etc. 6. 
an old-fashioned Thanksgiving, etc. Lulu's Library 1886 a collection of 32 short stories in three volumes. Flower Fables 1849. On Picket Duty, and Other Tales 1864. Morning Glories and Other Stories 1867, Eight Fantasy Stories and Four Poems for Children, including, Asterisk A Strange Island, 1868, Asterisk The Rose Family, A Fairy Tale 1864, A Christmas Song, Morning Glories, Shadow Children, Poppy's Pranks, What the Swallows Did, Little Gulliver, The Whale's Story, Goldfin and Silvertail. Kitty's Class Day and Other Stories Three Proverb Stories, 1868, includes, Kitty's Class Day. Aunt Kip, and Psyche's Art. Spinning Wheel Stories Asterisk 1884. A collection of 12 short stories. The Candy Country 1885, One Short Story. May Flowers 1887, One Short Story. Mountain Laurel and Maidenhair 1887, One Short Story. A Garland for Girls 1888. A collection of 8 short stories. The Brownie and the Princess 2004. A collection of ten short stories. Other short stories and novelettes Thoreau's Flute 1863. Hospital Sketches 1863. Pauline's Passion and Punishment Perilous Play 1869. One short story Lost in a Pyramid, or the Mummy's Curse Transcendental Wild Oats 1873, a short story about Alcott's family and the Transcendental Movement. Silver Pitchers, and Independence, a Centennial Love Story 1876. Comic Tragedies 1893, posthumously. In popular culture 1933, Little Women, a movie version of the novel. 1934, Little Men, a movie version of the novel. 1940, Little Men, a movie version of the novel. 1949, Little Women, a movie version of the novel. 1949, An Old Fashioned Girl, a movie version of novel. 1958, Little Women, a series based on the novel. 1970, Little Women, a series based on the novel. 1978, Little Women, a movie version of the novel. 1981, Little Women, an anime based on the novel. 1987, Tales of Little Women, an anime based on Little Women. 1994, Little Women, a movie version of the novel. 1997, The Inheritance, a movie version of the novel, which was published for the first time that year. 1998, Little Men, a movie version of the novel. 1998, Little Men, a TV show based on the novel. 2009, American Masters, PBS, episode Louisa May Alcott, The Woman Behind, Little Women. 2016, Google Doodle created by Google artist Sophie Diao. 2018, Little Women, a movie version of the novel. <laughs>